Hey, we hit a thousand subscribers today. Yeah, so we're now we're in the process of monetization. So it'll be finally night. Nice. We're making a whopping two hundred to four hundred dollars a month. Hey, it's much better than zero. It's a rainy day here at White Oak Manor, and I'm still feeling a little under the weather while we're under the weather. But we have a spring deadline that's closely approaching, and we need to advance this thing as much as humanly possible. So let's get started and make it happen, Captain. Y maybe vamos a tornear más abajo después. Vamos a ver cómo está la cosa. It's a little slippery and wet for us to be trying to climb all over these beams. So what we're going to try to do today is get the plywood sheathing on this lower portion of the lean-to. We are only going to be able to tack the plywood with the staple gun on the four-foot centers so that the staples will not penetrate and go through the tongue and groove roofing. When you nail plywood sheathing to any type of wall or roof, you never want the two sheets to be budding tight together. So what we're going to do is we are going to place these eighth-inch spacers in between the plywood so it creates that separation. Super necessary where we have extreme colds and very, very hot, humid summers. That creates a massive amount of expansion in your plywood and creates buckles either upwards or downwards. Always need to have a minimum of an eighth inch separation on the sides where they meet and the bottom. Oh man, I tell you, there's nothing worse in the winter than working with wet socks. We're gonna have to do whatever we can do not to have wet socks today. I think TJ has the right idea with the water boots. Now if we can just get him to wear his pouch, we'll be cooking with peanut oil. I thought the I thought you said Chip left his boots at home. What? His boots. Take them in. His boots? Yeah. So they mean even his boots. He's wearing mine. Dude, he got the, he got the same size as me. Or he got the size small. So he did the okie doke switch. No, I gave him to him, so quick lock. We're gonna frame these doors down to 10 foot so that way they can put a, a blower heater on the outside but the unit itself is so big it's, it's, it's just bigger than the space that we have available yeah and we're going to cut it right there we'll just take out what we need all right i'm gonna go all the way up poop All right, can you come back to me a little bit? Right there, baby. Can you give me that gun, Romeo? Hold still for a minute. Like yeah. Like it a lot. I don't like that I only got one nail in it. So when you start plywood from somewhere, the first layout you should make is three quarters of an inch back from the red number set ahead. And what that'll do is most of our lumber comes in nominal length of four foot or eight foot. So if you start from wherever your starting point is, mark three quarters of an inch back from the red number, set ahead with your stud. When you put a four foot sheet or an eight foot sheet, it will break directly in the center, allowing you to nail that sheet and whatever continues. Now, once you move your tape measure, you no longer have to cut mark three quarters of an inch back. You can simply just put your tape measure on that mark and mark the solid red number because each block will be exactly 16 inches from each other. I never thought this thing would come in handy, but I have seemed to drop my regular speed square somewhere, and uh, it's finally this little square. 
is gonna come into use for the first time in four months. Wait till we get on that 10, 12 pitch roof and have to go vertically all the way across. It's gonna be approximately 240 lines of boards, two per line, so about 500 one by six on each side. It's gonna be a lot of work. It looks really good. A lot of plywood. A lot of plywood. How are we doing over there? Who? Casi que mola paquete. Okay. Es que y usted y yo y Weezy sabíamos eso porque cuando estamos cortando las reglas, ellos marcaron mal el layout. Bugs de ellos, algo, algo no está perfectamente a la de We're not going to be able to plywood the entire roof because I don't want to jeopardize the straightness that we've done to work on the upper beams. If we remove those supports now to put the plywood, it's going to entirely defeat the purpose of all that we did to straighten up those beams. So we're just going to run two more rows, install our, our runners like we talked about earlier, and then I'll be able to build my sawhorse benches and lift up the one by six here. I think the better idea is just to go on ahead and move forward with sheathing the upper roof. And once that's locked in, we'll be able to move the temporary braces, finish the plywood, and at that point be done with the with this plywood sheathing of the roof. Oh yeah, gold, Texas tea, oil that is, but not really. It's just Colombian Folgers. Don't bring the cup home, wife brings no more. Gotta have that, sir. There's a little common misconception about these 7 16 inch by inch and three quarter narrow crown staples. This little staple can be the equivalent and or better than two and three eighths eight penny nails that we are nailing on our sheathing. If you've ever attempted to remove a sheet of plywood, it is nailed with your just similarly coated eight penny nails. You can rip that sheet off in approximately one to two minutes with very, very little effort. But if you've ever attempted to rip up these plywood off nailed with these staples, it will take an act of Congress to get that sheet of plywood off of the roof. Now that being said, around your shear walls, portal framing, and WSP rated corners, you are still required to use a ring shank nail. Very, very cost effective, super, super strong, 7 16 inch narrow crown staples for all your plywood wall and roof sheathing. The more I look at this thing, the more I realize how monstrous it actually is. It's an incredible build. Once in a lifetime, honestly. It's the per se, no tiene clavos. So what I'm gonna do here is that we can speed up the process a little bit for tomorrow. He's gonna build me some temporary saw horses. And I'm gonna space these out differently as I go down the roof. And we're gonna grab the, with the tractor some of those packs of lumber that we have downstairs. We're gonna set them up on these saw horses at a pretty good cutting height. And it should make the job a lot quicker by just spending about 30 minutes a day and doing a little bit of ground prep. It's been a heck of a day. The weather cleared out and allowed us to get a lot of work done. We've got the entire one by six stocked up here ready to go on the roof. So we're gonna do a last minute fine tuning with the string line to make sure we're ready to go for that sheathing tomorrow. So make sure you guys tune in so you don't miss out on any of it. Hit that like and subscribe button and keep this thing going. And until next time, you guys have a great day. But you didn't know the broom was a water scooper, did you, buddy? <laughs>